Hello all, Project Wargaming here with a new video. So a couple weeks ago I posted uh, some videos on a uh, Monocacy game. And uh, I think it was that video that I had someone request that I walk through how I actually set up a table. So I thought that that would be an interesting uh, video. So this is, this is my uh, attempt at that. Um, I set up my tables primarily for smaller scale battles. Six millimeter stuff is really what I'm playing most of now. So this works for six millimeter World War II, six millimeter Civil War, whatever you would play. Um, it could work for... Th this is how I would also set up a 28 millimeter table. Obviously the train is going to be very different. There might be a couple differences in there that would make it difficult to do this uh, same setup uh, with a 28 millimeter just because of the scale um, and the scale of the heel hills particularly. But everything else should be fine. So the first thing I wanted to discuss is just how I come up with the layout of the table. Oftentimes I'm just playing pickup games where it's uh, not recreating a particular battle at all. And so I just set up stuff as I go. So I start off with the hills and then I, after I have the hills, I lay the cloth down and then I, I work from there. But obviously uh, with Monocacy, I, I actually really recreated the battle itself, tried to do my best. And it's always going to be imperfect. But what I did was I started with a, a Battlefield map of that. I think I got it from the Battlefield Trust website. And then I gridded it out in... 12 inch squares and then from there I basically broke out kind of how I wanted how I thought things were going to lie so the linear stuff is typically what I start with first so the roads the rivers and the railroads this particular scenario definitely had railroad in it that's why they were fighting there so for my railroads I actually use a Z scale uh, railroad tracks, um, which you can get pretty cheap anymore. Um, with that though, because the tracks are harder and stiffer, uh, and not very pliable, you have to have foam underneath your table to begin with so that you can stick some pins or little tiny brad nails in there to hold the track in place and give you the curves that you're, lo you're looking for. But the rest of this stuff, you don't, you don't really need to do that at all. Um, so this is just my recreation of the Monocacy or Manicaki, uh battlefield, and it's, it's what I did. I have some hills located on here that are in gray, but it's very, very hard to see on this copy, um, but they're there. Uh, now, if you've never discovered these books, this book series, I highly, highly recommend them. I just discovered them like a month ago. Uh, it's been published, this book was published in 2007, I think, so um, so I think it's, they're fairly new, but uh, Bradley M. Godfrey, this is amazing stuff in here. He goes through many of the battles, and he has out, he has the whole layout of how the battles actually looked at that point. So this is corn, woods, uh, orchard. This, this is orchard, this is corn, and I mean, it's just amazing the detail that, it, that he has in here. These little lines here tell you what type of fence. So post and rail or warm, warm wood, and then he's got stone fence uh, located on here too. Um, the rest of it's pretty easy to figure out, but just the detail that is available in these books is pretty amazing. So if you've not discovered them, I highly, highly recommend them. Uh, he does a great job at very detailed stuff, and then he has some bigger maps. So this, I think, is Pettigrew, Pickett's Charge. So this shows you kind of what that looked like. Um, he also has some overall uh, battle maps from kind of farther out. So, uh, yeah, just a great little source of info. He's got them for multiple battles. I think he just does it for the Civil War. He might start working on uh, other, other things as well, I guess. But we'll see. So anyways, that is just uh, the start. So without further ado, I will get into how I actually lay out the table. All right, so how I start setting up my tables is I make sure that I set up my hills first and then I use a cigar mat to cover it all over. So my hills, I've done a video on these before. 
I use simple uh, foam core and I cut them in, I think these are six inch squares so that they fit together and they give me enough of a variation that I can kind of create all kinds of different hill shapes. Um, so this is what I've done. I think you could also do this with the little thin pink insulation foam, the little quarter inch stuff that you use on some stuff. It's pricey, but it's not as pricey as uh, buying sheets of uh, foam core. Uh, I put four layers on there and then I make sure that the uh, edges are trimmed so that it gives me a nice um, easy surface to place my models on. And then the you don't really see the each line here once you get the uh, cigar box mat placed on it. I have two cigar box mats that I use and they lay really nice. They're a nice thick mat so they really cover up uh, some of the uh, mistakes or hard, hard edges on the hills and then you just make sure that all that gets smoothed out. If you're doing this in 28 millimeter your hills are going to be taller typically and so it would be harder to uh, maybe do this because you get wrinkles and creases and stuff. But just something simple like this is, is pretty easy to cover with a cigar box mat. I've done this all different ways. I've, I've done it where I started off with just <laughs> playing on a, uh, a floor and using a big green cloth when I was you know a teenager and making blocks and squares for my my hills and then I worked my way up to interlocking foam panels that I flocked and everything that give them in my hills and all of that. This is kind of what I've settled on. I really like it. I think it's very simple. <clears throat> I don't have to worry about painting these or flocking these. Uh, the ground all looks similar and it works perfect for six millimeter as far as I'm concerned. So once you have the hills laid out <clears throat> and all of those in place, the next thing I go to is the linear kind of obstacles. So the rivers is first, and then I go with the roads after that. These are again, uh, rivers that I've made. I think I have videos uh, from over a year ago on how I actually made my rivers on my channel. So you can do that. Sometimes I flip them around just so I can get a cleaner edge uh, butting up against each other. So that is my rivers and then I come in with my roads. So when a road intersects a river I either keep it on top if I'm going to put a bridge over it. If I'm not and it's a ford then I put put the road underneath of the river. If I'm able to I try to get my seams for my rivers to fall underneath bridges or um, other obstacles so it doesn't stick out as much. And then my roads, <clears throat> I typically put one tag end underneath another, and then I will even try to cover up those tag ends with another one so that it's, I have as, as few seams out there on the, the board as possible. Uh, the next thing I do <clears throat> after I have these all laid out is I will typically come in for my forests. So my forest, I have a video on these where I went in and actually uh, paid someone on Etsy to print this off on uh, cloth. Uh, all I did was take an image off of uh, Google Maps and um, just a little section and then spread that out over a big huge cloth and try to scale it so that it looked somewhat uh, correct for six millimeter troops. And I just lay that out. If I have a, a road going through a forest, then all I do is lift it up and put it back in the same spot. Uh, same thing with the rivers. So I might want that uh, to go through there. I'll come through, lift it up and just lay it back down so that my linear obstacles don't get uh, messed up. Um, and then if I need to overlap, because I just cut them into generic shapes, I overlap them. And with that texture that really blends in and you don't really see them, the cloth is thin enough, it doesn't really stick up. Sometimes felt becomes really thick and there's the felt is almost as thick as the bases. So um, this lays nice and flat. The next thing after I get uh, where my my hills or my, my forests are gonna be placed is I come in and I do my 
fields. So I start with my corn fields. I lay those out and I make sure that they are uh, kind of facing the same direction. And then after I have my fields placed, Then I would come in with my fences and I would do that. Now, the trick on this is I've cut my fields to match my fence lengths so that I have enough kind of play in here that I can easily manipulate them and it doesn't, I don't have huge little uh, ends coming off of of my fences so it doesn't look uh, really uh, trashy I guess um, sometimes you'll also want to have areas particularly with the Civil War where it's just uh, open pasture so you know you can kind of outline them however you like and you're a little bit freer in manipulating how your fences sit when it comes to uh, pasture areas so once you have that all set up then I would come in with my final church or buildings or whatever it might be um, that I'm wanting to have out there. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> after I have all that done, then I come in with my forests. These are just, uh, these are some I made a long time ago and uh, just use them and, and make smaller bases out of them and, and do that. Every once in a while I'll have some like some, some small strips of forest and I'll just put those along the river edge just to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, they don't really count as anything in my terrain. Um, they don't block line of sight. They don't block shooting. They don't give cover. Uh, anything that's in a forest base, a uh, forest area, does provide cover. But anything, any forests that are not in that don't provide cover. They're just there for looks. So I kind of make that clear to my players. At least I think I do. And then, of course, they yell at me. telling me that I didn't make that clear when they wanted it to protect them or whatever. So, anyways, uh, that is basically how I set up my, my table. I think it's a really simple system. You just break it down. Hills first. Cloth. Linear obstacles. Rivers and roads. Railroads. Then you come in with your forests. Then you put down your fields. Then you put your fences your uh, buildings, and then you put in your trees. So that's how I do it. So I hope that uh, that's helpful. And yeah, we'll talk to you later.